Yep. So yeah, you're the gentleman that commented on my Facebook when I took the statements of a Calvinist slandering Catholics, turned it against the Calvinists. And you made a comment and I said, do not comment here, but call me so we can engage your Calvinism because I used to be a Calvinist like you. So I'm assuming you're a five point Calvinist, right? Yes. Um, I don't normally use the term Calvinist because uh, a lot of the time, you know, it drags in depending on the person's understanding of it. Now I know you formally holding that position, it's probably not the same deal, but you know, they're bringing a lot of other doctrines that Calvin held that we don't necessarily disagree with, but as far as soteriology goes, yeah. So yeah. you, do you agree with Calvin's view of the extent of Christ's atonement? To be honest, I haven't read uh, as much of his writing on that as I'd like to. I'm not sure exactly where he landed on that, but as far as so what the Calvin doctrine of the atonement, uh, when he, Calvin would, taught, uh, well, I'm trying to explain. When Calvin taught passages such as John 129 or 316 and others, refers to Christ dying to procure the redemption of the whole human race without exception. Do you agree with him? I need to see the context of it. I need to look uh, and see. Uh, I'm going to give it well, to you. Uh, Mark 14, 23, this is my blood. I've already remarked that when we are told that the blood that the blood is going to be shed, or excuse me, the blood is to be shed according to the narrative of Matthew for the remission of sins. These words direct us to the sacrifice, the death of Christ, without the remembrance of which the Lord's Supper is never observed in a proper manner. And indeed, it is impossible for believing souls to be satisfied in any other way than to be assured that God is pacified towards them, uh, which is shed for many. By the word many, he means not a part of the world only, but the whole human race. Repeat that part again. The whole human race. Okay, keep going. Yeah, but he, excuse me, for he contrasts many with one, as if he had said that he will not be the redeemer of one man only, but will die in order to deliver many from, from the condemnation of the curse. It must be at the same time observed, however, that by the words for you, as related by Luke, Christ directly addressed the disciples and exhorts every directly, excuse me, exhorts every believer to apply his own advantage, apply to his own advantage, the shedding of blood. And therefore, when we approach the holy table, let us not only remember in general that the world has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. Repeat that again. But, yeah. Uh, to, to, to remember in general that the world has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. But let everyone consider for himself that his own sins have been expiated. Okay. Now, what comes before or after this that changes the meaning of his words? Nothing that I can see there. Now, uh, Matthew, it, it does is plainly what he said. Okay, can but, you read Matthew 26 or 9? Before you get to the but, read Matthew 26 or 9. It comes now to required. What advantage did Christ gain by praying? The apostle in writing to the Hebrews says that he was heard on account of his fear. So all that passage to be explained and not as it is usually explained on account of its reverence. Uh, Hebrews 5, 7. That would not have been consistent if Christ had simply feared death, for he was not delivered from it. Hence it follows that what led him to pray to be delivered from death was the dread of a greater evil. When he saw the wrath of God exhibited to him as he stood on the tri at the tribunal of God, charged with the sins of the whole world, he unavoidably shrunk with horror from the deep of death. So he, the sins of the elect or the whole world? It says the whole world. Okay. But now let's go to Colossians 1 and read for me 13 to 17. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you, when it says all things in heaven and earth, is anyone excluded? Are you a Jehovah Witness that thinks it's all other things? No, I can't say that I am. Okay, so all things in heaven and earth. Is there anything exempted, excluded from the work of creation? Did Christ create every created thing in heaven and earth? There's nothing that exists that he did not create. Okay, so you're clear, right? Because Because when I come up now to 19 to 20... I hope your answer doesn't change. So you're certain all things in heaven and earth means every created thing was brought into existence by Christ and sustained by Christ, right? 
Sure. Okay. Now read for me 18 to 20. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the first form, the firstborn, excuse me, from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace to through the blood of his cross, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Okay, now, when it says all things, same phraseology is found in 16 and 17. And then it says on earth and heaven. If in 16 and 17, all things in heaven and earth means all creation, then in verse 20, when it uses all things on earth and heaven, what's excluded? Same language, by the way. Yeah, same language. So what's excluded? Nothing. Say it again. Nothing. So you understand you just destroyed limited atonement, right? If all things on earth and heaven refer to all things that he created, tell me what's exempted, what's excluded from his work of reconciliation through the blood of his cross. Speaking generally here in the terms that the, these verses are addressing, nothing. But if we take this and isolate it, you know, this the reconciliation there, that would seem to imply that there are, are none who would be lost, none who will not yeah, be saved. Yeah, because it destroys your system. Do not teach that. No, actually, it so, destroys your system that you think that if Christ died for someone, ipso facto, necessarily, the person that he died for must be saved because he'll come to saving faith. And that's begging the question. That's putting the cart before the horse. This is why your system is not scriptural. So don't read your system into the text. Deal with the text and exegete it. If there's nothing excluded, then that means it's not limited atonement. It's actually unlimited atonement that Christ has accomplished perfectly the redemption of every creature. But that redemption is not applied until the person believes. So it destroys your system. It is consistent with scripture, but your system's not consistent with scripture. Either. Say it there's again. There's nothing here that says that that, that, that uh, atonement is potential. Until the person believes, there's nothing in there that that substantiates. Okay, the so then you're universalist. That's what I'm saying. If we no, no, that's this, what I, no, that's what your conclusion. Except no, that's your perversion people. of scripture, because even as a Calvinist, because I'm going to nail you on this. So, the, are the elect born justified or saved? Or are they still dead in sin until the moment they believe in Christ? As far as it plays out in time, yeah, yes, they're, they're born dead in sin. And so, so is the death of Christ, if the death of Christ applied to them before they believe, or is it applied to them once they believe? I can't answer that the way you want me to. Without no, you can answer category. it the way Paul does, Romans 3.25. Go read Romans 3.25. When is it applied? Uh, I'm going to back up to 21 to get the no, full please sentence. Read. Well, man, start read from 9, because nothing in the content is going to change the point. Now we know whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. Because by the works of the law, no, no flesh will be justified in his sight. But through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all, for all those who? Say it short. again. For all those who? You know at the end of 22? No, for all those who what? Who do what? Believe, for there Thank is you. no distinction. So, make sure you emphasize believe. There's no distinction for those who believe, right? Yeah, Okay, keep, going. keep reading. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, whom God public, uh, displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. Now read 25 again. Yeah. Whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. Through what? As a, sorry, through faith. Okay, so when I said that is the death of Christ applied to the elect before they believe? Why couldn't you just give me a straight up answer and say no? Because Paul just said to those who believe through faith, the blood of Christ is applied and you are propitiated. Is it there in the text? Do you see it? The instrumental means is faith? Yeah, it does. Okay, so but can I, I repeat my question, which you didn't answer? It's the scripture. Okay, Sorry, can I repeat my question, which you didn't answer conveniently? So sure. is the death of Christ 
that accomplish the redemption of the elect apply to them before they believe or only until they believe? As far as the experience of the time, in time, yeah, excuse in time. me, it's... We know all acts take place in time. Even the death of Christ took place in time, unless you believe Christ was eternally crucified. Let me make the question clear. Let's see if you're going to answer honestly. Is the death of Christ applied to the elect before they believe or until they believe? I have to give you the same answer I've been given. I, without confusing hey brother, why, why are you wasting my time when you can't deal with Scripture? Scripture is your enemy. Because you can't deal with Scripture. You have to bring in rhetoric and emotional appeal to explain away the plain passages of Scripture. Because I know I used to be a five Pauline Calvinist until God saved me out of your system. So why are you wasting my time when you're not ready to defend your position scripturally? Can I ask whose emotion I'm appealing to? You. I'm appealing to my own emotion. That no, you're like actually weird, trying weird. to use rhetoric to try to get an emotional response. Been there, done that. Like, oh, as it plays out in time. So who disagrees that these things take place in time? Is that something that needs to be said? Who denies that Christ died in time? Who denies that the elect are in time? Who denies that the elect are created in time? Who denies that the elect believe in time? Why do you keep emphasizing as it plays out in time, if not for the purpose of trying to obfuscate smoke and mirror tactics? Been there, he done that. Stay cross. He okay, said now, it is finished. The work that he came to okay, do. If, yes, he was, accomplished the <clears throat> redemption for all who then believe in him. There is no redemption that is applied unless you believe. That's what just Paul said. Paul just said that. Romans 3.25. Through faith. So are you saying the elect are created saved and the death of Christ is applied to them before they believe? I'm not. But okay. I'm saying in, in so, God's, as far as God's eternal decree, as far as these things yes. having been determined already. Yeah, and that, it still that, his decree that, means just, it will not be applied until they believe, right? Right. Okay, so then you just said it. It won't be applied till they believe. That's what I just said about Colossians 1. Christ accomplishing redemption is not the same thing as applying redemption. And you just agreed that God decreed that the death of Christ will be applied when they believe. So you just said what I said. So why did we take five minutes to get to this point? I don't know, but what I do like, though, is I think maybe by accident we did stumble into uh, the topic of the decree. The comment. Okay, now, the I want, since we, you want to talk about decree, yes. do you believe that God has decreed those who will <clears throat> be reprobate and not believe in Christ and be destroyed to the glory of God? Yes. Say it again? Yes. Okay, so I just want to, because, again, for some people it's going to be shocking. And I'm not shocked because I used to believe that myself. So you do believe in eternity before creation, God had created people to reprobate in order to damn them eternally for his glory. Yes. Yes. And okay. I understand the shock that comes with that. That took me a very long time to reason through that and, and not to be able to run from it in scripture. Yeah, no, actually, a, any passage they, you use, brother, you, you, you think you're probably thinking talking to an Armenian who doesn't know the passages you're going to cite. Just be patient. So I want to come back and ask another question. Do you also believe that God has decreed the acts in time, such as rape? Yes or no? They, yeah, they are. They See, why are you under... fumbling? Don't be ashamed of your system. Be proud and be bold. Don't be ashamed in a fear of fear of man. So now I'm appealing to motion. Do you believe, let's make it clear, that God decreed acts in time such as the raping of a child? There is nothing that occurs in time that's outside. So you didn't answer directly. Decree. See, there goes the rhetoric again. I'm going to repeat it a third time. See, it's so easy to just say it. Don't be ashamed of your system. If you're not ashamed of your God, just say what you believe. Do you believe, do you believe that God has decreed acts in time such as the raping of a child? Did God decree a man to rape a child? Yes, there's nothing that happens. In okay, time slowly. You said it too fast. So what was it? I said yes. So yes, you do believe that when ICE, ISIS goes around in Afghanistan and takes children and rapes them or rapes women who are married and beheads men. I want you to be honest now because I know you believe this because I used to believe this. I want you to be honest. Don't be ashamed. Yes, God decreed those actions these people did. 
Yeah, in human terms, it's absolutely horrifying. It is. Uh, Forget the horrifying. The Just do you believe that? Yeah, there's nothing. Say it louder. The time. Say it it's passionately, good. like you believe it without shame. Yes, I want to because you when when it comes to the S part, all of a sudden the decimals go lower. Say it out loud. You do believe. Let me repeat it again. God decreed that ISIS jihadis goes to Afghanistan, kidnaps young children, rapes young girls, rapes married women, and beheads men. God decreed they do that. Yes? Yeah, the reason... Don't give me the reason. The, you didn't the, say yes or no. Yes? I'm not going to be your puppet, man. No, well, you're God's I'm puppet. Not. You're not my puppet. You're God's puppet. You're right. You're a puppet on strings. Yes or no? Just say yes, then you can then justify it. Yes? Again, yes. Okay, good. You said yes. Now, justify it. What's your reason? Go ahead. Now, I'll let you justify it because you said yes. Everyone heard it. Yes, but go ahead. Uh, it's going to, well, and it depends on the specific case. I'm not going to be able to, to say what that may be, but we know that, I mean, you mentioned Romans. I'll go close to Romans now. I'm Romans 8, 28. But yeah, that doesn't that prove your case. Happen. God can work out the evil that you do for a greater purpose. So don't misquote scripture to me. Romans 8, all things work out for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Yes, everything that takes place, God can then work it out for a greater good. That's not the same thing as God causing all things such as rape to occur. So don't misquote Romans 8, 28 with me. But here I want to ask you a follow-up question then. Could well, have, ISIS have, have chosen, could yeah. ISIS have chosen not to rape that little girl if God had agreed it? They could not, just like the they Roman could not, right? Could not have Say it again, Jesus. Wait, wait, hold on. Which one they could, I, brother. Slowly, you're speaking Sorry. too fast. Slowly, slowly. Could ISIS have chosen not to rape that young girl if God had decreed for that man to rape that young girl? They could not. Okay, just at. The Roman soldiers who executed Christ yeah. could not have chosen. To no, that's different. your assumption yeah. that God has to work in such a way that he has to decree the choices of the Roman soldiers to bring about the crucifixion of Christ, as opposed to working in such a way through their choices to bring about the death of Christ. But that's neither here nor there. I just wanted you to admit your system. So now where did I misrepresent your, your system? You just admit well, everything I said. Before we get to it, you say I'm speaking quickly. That's because I'm trying to get it out before you run over it. No, I only you, run over it. Do, I only do, run over what, it like you did right now. It, okay, you like did it again. Like, Brother, if you want, you can we, leave. Bye-bye. You don't like it? Get out of here. Go. I didn't put a gun to your head. But it was decreed for you to come and decreed for me to talk over you. Don't forget. God decreed for me to talk over you and for you to run. You don't like it? Get out of here. I didn't invite you here. You lied and said I misrepresented your system. You just agreed to everything I said in my post. Now, did God decree for me to block you? Because I'm about to block you for your tap dance. Okay. You're going to block me because okay. all you can through leave now, this, I've been trying to do yeah. the you verses. Thank you. You I just proved my point. But bye-bye. This was decreed, by the way. Bye-bye. There you go. There you got it from the horse's mouth. That's all I wanted. You heard him say, yes, God decreed that ISIS would rape that little girl and rape married women and behead men. And then when I asked him, could ISIS have chosen not to rape that little girl if God had decreed it? He said, no. So there you go, guys. This is Calvinism.